Well, I hope I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions that you might have. I hope to elevate your respect for the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your sewing machine, the Smets needle. I'm hoping to remove any mystery you might have about the needles like all those numbers on the little needle pad, while also increasing your confidence in your needle selection. So let's go ahead and get started. It's in three sections. I'll first talk about the physical needle. I'll be looking for any questions that you might have and Trisha will help uh, monitor the chat box. So as questions come up, just go ahead and type those into the chat. Then I'll move on to specific needle types for piecing and quilting, sewing with knits, etc. And then I have a mystery question, and I'm pretty certain it's a question that you have asked in the past. I want to start with the parts of the needle. And yes, this is my Smet Super Demo Needle. It is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. I like to start with the parts of the needle because I believe when you're aware of the parts of the needle and their function, it helps you make an informed decision as to what needle type and size to use. So at the very top of your needle, and I've got a little wooden display um, base here, but I think even virtually, you can see at the very top of your needle is a beveled edge. This is referred to as the butt of the needle. And you might think, yeah, so what, a beveled edge? <laughs> well, stop and think about it. When you go to insert a new needle in your machine, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So with the top of the needle beveled, it's easier to insert the needle into the holder. Our home sewing machines require a flat shank. 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle. Again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. We have a little transitional area referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope you've noticed that your needles have either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those Smith color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle. This is referred to as the blade of the needle. And Smets, being a German company, they measure this area here of the blade to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. They'll measure this area and they'll get um, a measurement like 0 0.70, 0 0.80, etc. They take that actual measurement times 100 to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, etc. So those sizes are based on the actual measurement, the diameter of your blade. So keep that in mind because now knowing that, I hope it's easier for you to remember that a size 90 needle is larger than a size 70 needle. Now, back to our blade. On your actual little Smets needle, how many of you have noticed on the front of your, your needle this little groove? And what's the purpose of the groove? The groove is going to cradle your thread so it moves evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye. When you're sewing, your thread should not be flip-flopping back and forth. It should move evenly and smoothly so you get a nice clean stitch. We have the point and the tip. And these change according to different needle types. And on the back side of our needle, we have this little indentation. This is referred to as the scarf of the needle, and it's above the eye of the needle on the back side. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs passing room in order to create that stitch. So here are the basic parts to your, your needle. We talked about that beveled edge called the butt. We've got the shank, the shoulder with the color um, bands. We've got the blade, the groove, the point, the tip. And I haven't mentioned the eye yet. And I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to your um, needle. On the next slide, you're going to see three different eyes. Your everyday 
needle, the universal needle. The eye is 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle, and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch in the metallic, you can see that the eye is significantly longer. It's elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have threads that are breaking or shredding, what are you going to do? Well, you need to change your needle. You might need to move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. So I hope I've solved a little situation we sometimes encounter. Threads that break and shred, what are you going to do? Yeah, you need to change your, your needle. Let's look at the, the color bands for Smet's needles. I want to make sure you're comfortable reading this chart. So on the left-hand side of this chart, it's labeled needle type. So all of the Smet's home sewing machine needle types are listed, and many needle types are assigned a color. Now look at the column on the right-hand side, and it's labeled needle size. So every home sewing machine needle size is shown, and there's a color assigned. Sign. Now let's look at the needle between the two color bands. The top color band on your needle identifies your needle type. So on this sample here, the top color band is yellow. So we look off to the left under needle type and we find yellow is a stretch needle. Looking at our needle between the two columns, that lower color band is pink and pink identifies your needle size. So look off to the right under needle size and we find pink is size 7511. So this sample here is a stretch size 7511. But let me walk you through a couple other examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of sewing, piecing, quilting, etc. is a Microtex size 8012. So what would the two color bands be? Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find Microtex is purple. And for size 8012, we look off to the right and we find um, the color is orange. So Microtex size 8012 will have a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be what needle type and size would I have if I have two bands of orange? Two bands of orange. Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find orange is a jersey needle. And again, we look off to the right under needle size and orange is still size 8012. So two bands of orange will be a jersey size 8012 needle. There's one more thing I need to point out about the Smets collar chart, and that has to do with the needle type. The very first needle listed is a universal needle, but there's no color. In fact, the box is X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles have only one band of color, and that's to identify your needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 needle, well, you have just a, a single band of orange. If it's a universal size 9014, you have just that single band of blue. So I hope um, these color bands help you identify your needles, especially after you've taken them out of your needle pack. So lots of information about your, your Smets color chart. But let's scoot right along to the next slide. And I want to talk about all those numbers that are on your little needle pack. Currently, at the bottom of your needle pack, you find the needle size. So on this sample here, we've got a sorted sizes, 7010, 8012, and 9014. And I think most everyone recognizes needle size. But how many of you have looked about that the needle size and wondered what the heck does 13705H mean? Think of it as a model number. It's actually referred to as the needle system. 13705 means that the needle has a flat shank for our home sewing machine. And the H translates from a German word that means scarf, that little indentation on the backside of your needle. So needle system 13705H is a flat shank needle with a scarf that we use in 99% of all of our home sewing machines. So don't let that number intimidate you. It's just a model number. It's a flat shank needle with a scarf 
That's what 130705H means. Above the needle system on the next slide, you'll see the needle type spelled out. So these are universal needles. Above that, we've got the Smets name. And if you click through the next slide or to the needle type, you'll Above that is the Smets name, and then through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on this pack here, we've got just single bands of color because we already learned that universal needles have one band of color to identify your needle size. So on this pack here, the two needles on the left have green bands, green for size 70, 10. The next two needles to the right have orange bands for size 80, 12. And the needle on the far right has that single band of blue for size 90, 14. So lots of information on your little um, needle pack here. But let's look at the next slide and see another needle pack with similar information. Again, at the bottom of your needle pack currently is the needle size. So this is size 9014. Above that is the needle system 130705H. So we know we this is a flat shank needle with a scarf that we can use in our home sewing machine. But look at that needle system line just a little bit closer because oftentimes you'll find an additional letter. On this sample here, it's a dash E, E for embroidery. On some of your other samples, you might find a dash J for jeans or Q for quilting or M for microtax. So lots of information on your needle system line. Above that, is the um, needle type spelled out. Above that, even today, sometimes you'll still see the German word for needle. Above that is the Smets name. And again, above that, through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on this pack here, each the top color band of each needle is red, red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue. Blue for size 9014. So I hope this information helps you understand all those um, numbers and letters that you sometimes see on your, your little Smets needle pack. No need to be intimidated, but lots of information that is useful when you go to buy and use your, your needles. Lots of information. But now let's talk about specific needles. What do you think the most popular needle type is? And I bet most of you would guess that the universal is the most popular needle type. The universal needle has a slightly rounded point. It works beautifully with both woven and with knit fabrics. The universal needle, I like to refer to to it as the workhorse of all needle types. This needle is also available in the uh, widest range of sizes, from the smallest size 60 slash 8, all the way up to a size 120. Plus, the universal needle is available in twin and triple needles too. So lots of choices with your universal needle. So uh, for piecing and quilting, what needle should you use? Well, there are five needle types that are popular for piecing and quilting. And certainly the universal needle is one of the popular ones. Again, a lot of uh, famous quilters use the universal for both piecing and for quilting. But today I want to show you a couple other needle types that are popular for piecing and quilting too. One needle type is the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. Does that surprise you? Well, how many of you like to make denim quilts? or flannel quilts, or those heavy-duty raggy quilts. When you're making those kinds of quilts, you need a special needle. The jeans needle has a reinforced blade. A reinforced blade so that when your needle passes through your heavier or denser fabrics, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle, so you get a cleaner stitch. So the jeans needle has that reinforced blade. So it's wonderful when you're making jeans quilts, denim quilts, heavy duty uh, flannel quilts, or those heavy duty raggy quilts, the jeans needle. Another needle type popular for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. The top stitch needle also has a slightly rounded point. And as we learned already in that slide about the eyes of the needle, the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle, the top stitch needle. Another choice is, well, 
just as the name suggests, is the quilting needle. Use this needle for both piecing and for quilting. This needle has a special taper, a special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. The quilting needle will penetrate through your layers beautifully. The quilting needle has a slightly rounded point. You'd probably use the size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And that leaves one other needle type popular for piecing and quilting. And this certainly isn't last <laughs> but not uh, least. This is a very important needle and it's my favorite for piecing and quilting generally. And that is the Microtex needle. The generic name for a Microtex needle is a sharp needle. So when your books and patterns say use a sharp needle, well, they're referring to a Smets Microtex needle. What's so special about this needle? The Microtex needle has a very slim, acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get very clean, precise stitches. And because the Microtex has this very slim, acute point, guess what? The Microtex is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace your Microtex more frequently than any other needle type. The other thing I want to say about the Microtex is, well, how many of you like to sew a piece or quilt with um, batik fabrics? The Microtex is a great needle choice when you're working with batik fabrics. Even if you pre-wash your batik fabrics, it will sometimes still be tightly woven and can still have dye residue. But the Microtex needle can work beautifully in creating stitches through your batik fabric. So if you're working with batiks, I strongly um, suggest that you use the Microtex needle. Five great needle types popular for piecing and quilting. If you're taking notes here today, you can write these down. We've got the universal needle, the workhorse of all needle types, available in the widest range of sizes, the universal. And I didn't mention this before, but universal size 8012 is the most popular needle size, followed by universal size 9014. So no matter what kind of sewing, piecing, quilting you like to do, I always suggest you have universal 8012 and 9014 in your stash. Other options for piecing and quilting are the jeans needle, especially if you're making a jeans quilt, a flannel quilt, or a heavy duty raggy quilt. That jeans needle has the reinforced blade, so there's less needle deflection when the stitch is created. We have the top stitch needle with that um, slightly rounded point and the elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. There's the quilting needle, also with a slightly rounded point, but it has a special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. You'd probably use the size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And that leaves one other needle type, the Microtex, also known as a sharp needle. The Microtex has that very slim, acute point. So you get really clean, accurate stitch stitches. And this is a great needle to use um, when you're sewing on batiks. That Microtex with that very slim, acute point is also going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So be prepared to change out your Microtex more frequently. So all of these needles you can find over at Sewing Parts Online, and they're also bundled. So Sewing Parts Online has these, uh, these five needles already bundled up for you. The bundle also comes with this little laminated luggage tag with the Smets color chart. So you can put this on your luggage or on your sewing machine, especially if you're um, starting to go to classes or retreats. I actually put my luggage tag on. <laughs> on luggage. Actually, I'll give you a little story. When I was at the airport um, on my way to QuiltCon a couple weeks ago, I'm just waiting for the plane and a lady comes up to me and she goes, oh, um, are you going to QuiltCon? And I said, yes. How did you know? She goes, oh, your luggage tag was a clue. <laughs> so yes, you can create friendships also just by um, using the luggage tag. The uh, bundles that Sewing Parts Online um, has also 
comes with the handy ever popular Smets ABC pocket guide. And I'll talk about this little pocket guide um, again shortly, but it's everything you need to know about your needles and you will not be sharing this. You want to keep it for yourself. <laughs> so that is the piecing and um, quilting bundle. But let me just scoot along to a couple other um, needle types. I want to talk about sewing with knits. If you haven't sewn with knits in a while, I encourage you to do so because knits have really um, improved over the years. There are two types of needles that you need in your stash when you're sewing with knits. And the first is the jersey needle. The generic name for a jersey needle is a ballpoint needle. The jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle that you need in your stash when sewing with knits is a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ballpoint. But when you compare the stretch needle to the jersey needle, the stretch needle has a smaller eye and a deeper scarf. So now the stretch needle is going to interact just a little bit differently compared to the jersey needle. It interacts a little bit differently with your machine, your thread, and your fabric, and your technique. So if you're sewing with knits, well, how do you know? What needle type to use, a jersey or a stretch needle? Well, there's a rule of thumb that works about 80% of the time. If your knit fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey needle. Sometimes jersey and stretch are interchangeable, but not always. So I do a lot of sewing um, with knits. My knits generally have about three anywhere from one to three percent lycra or spandex. So what needle do I use? Yeah, I use the stretch needle. But every once in a while, there'll be um, a stretch fabric that I just don't get the quality of stitch that I expect from my needle. So if that stretch needle doesn't work, then I switch to the jersey needle and that generally solves the problem. So in general, the rule of thumb is if your knit fabric has um, light cross spandex or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey needle. And every once in a while, stretch and jersey will be interchangeable. So these needles, yes, you can find these needles at um, Sewing Parts Online. Um, they are also bundled up with the handy little luggage tag and also with the ABC pocket guide. So keep that in mind. You know, it's a great way to um, sample different types of needles by bringing in um, or buying these, these little bundles. So, and you can discover what your favorite needle type and size is. There's one other type of needle that I want to talk about today. And this one was introduced right before the um, pandemic. So if you don't know about it, that's fine. That's why I'm here today is to keep you informed about your Smets needles. So the newest needle is the Super Nonstick Needle. This is a universal needle. And I think you can see that these needles are a little bit different color. They're ch uh, charcoal gray or uh, kind of a gunmetal color. And that's the anti-adhesive coating. But there's a couple other features about this needle that I want to bring to your attention. This needle also has a reinforced blade, like that jeans needle that we saw earlier, a reinforced blade. So now you get really clean, precise stitches and you can work with heavier fabrics. This uh, super nonstick universal needle also has an enlarged eye, so there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. Fantastic features to this needle. When are you going to use them? Well, how many of you like to do multimedia quilts where you're working with a variety of fabrics or fabrications, maybe some paper, metals, of course, fabrics. You're working with spray adhesives. The Super Nonstick is a great needle choice when working with um, multimedia quilts. How many of you like to do machine embroidery or machine um, applique? And oftentimes you're working with um, a stabilizer or a spray adhesive. And what happens to those items? Yeah, your needle is working so hard 
uh, hot, uh, so hard that um, the stabilizers can get sticky and gum up your needle. So the super nonstick will resist the adhesives from gumming up your needle. If you like to sew on um, oil cloth or splash fabric, the super nonstick's a great choice. And what about vinyl? Yes, use the super nonstick when you're sewing on vinyl. What happens when you sew on vinyl? The vinyl gets warm. And then the vinyl has a tendency to hug your needle. And now you can't see where you're sewing. So the super nonstick uh, lets you sew through vinyl easily. And there's one other application super for the um, nonstick needle. And that's when you're working with hoop and loop tape or Velcro which is really, if you stop and think about it, kind of an odd fabrication. It's fuzzy, it's sticky, and it's crispy. But the super nonstick can just stitch right through that Velcro beautifully. So the super nonstick, yep, comes in four sizes, sizes 70, 80, 90, and 100. You can um, buy these by the single pack and uh, solve a lot of sticky problems <laughs> when you're doing machine embroidery, machine applique, um, et cetera, so, or sewing on vinyl. So uh, lots of needle choices uh, right here. Okay, I see uh, Darcy said that vinyl is hard to sew and that she needs the nonstick needle. Yeah, you'll find that that makes a, a huge difference. Oh, okay, Renee sews with vinyl also, and she's going to give um, the nonstick a chance. Yes! What is the most popular question that I get asked? And that is, how long does a needle last? Well, here's the easy answer. Many of you learned that needles don't last forever. As you'll see in the next slide, that you can abuse your needles. These are really super nasty looking needles. That needle on the left hand side looks like it has twin mountain peaks. The needle on the far right looks like a cutting blade. So what are these needles, these nasty looking needles going to do to your fabrics? Yeah, these needles are just going to eat up your fabrics and create little problems, situations while you're sewing. So what's the solution? change out your needle. Yep, that's right. You need to change out the needle. Your needle is not a permanent machine part. You can change that needle even at two o'clock in the morning. You don't have to take your machine into the technician, but you do need a little stash of needles off to the side. So <laughs> you can change it um, at any time. This is one of my favorites because this is the same needle in every frame. With the naked eye, this needle on the left-hand side looks sharp, right? But it's the same needle. And as we met, look at the magnification increasing as we move to the right, you can really see how dull and nasty that needle is. It's got that super burr right there on the dull lip. It's got all those burrs and striations. So what, again, what is this needle going to do to your fabric? Yeah, it's just going to eat up your fabric. So what's the solution? Just change out your needle. Needles don't last forever. I want you to stop and think about all the money that you're investing in your hobby. You've spent a lot of money on your machine or machines, right? Machines aren't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how much you spend on your machines. It's an investment. You spent a lot of money creating a fabric stash or stashes, or shall I say curated fabrics. You've spent a lot of money collecting all those beautiful threads. You've spent a lot of money on patterns, books, retreats, classes, etc. You spend a lot of time sewing, piecing, quilting, etc. And time, your time is an investment too. So let's complete that investment cycle that starts with your machine, moves through your fabric and your thread and your time. So let's complete that um, investment right down to the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your sewing machine, the Smets needle. And I might add the least expensive part to your machine too. So have some needles handy um, so that you can change them out. The other thing I want to mention about needles is that oftentimes we juggle projects, right? So maybe you're working on a quilt right now and you've only sewn for a little bit of time and you haven't hit any pins, you haven't had any problems. 
things. But now you want to make a little t-shirt for a youngster and you need to change out that needle. So you've switched out needles. Where are you going to put that slightly used needle? Where are you going to put that slightly used needle? Well, Trisha showed you a little bit earlier the Grab It My Pad. This is a needle organizer, a really wonderful way to organize your slightly used needles. I know some people like to put um, the slightly used needle back into the needle pack. You could do that, but then you kind of forget, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is an easy way. This is the Grab It My Pad. Let me just walk you through it real quick. This is an extra thick piece of felt. And then we imprint all of the different Smets needle types on here. And I updated it not so long ago with all the different Smets um, color codes. So red for embroidery, blue for jeans, orange for jersey, etc. So now with your slightly used needle, you can just slide your needle into the appropriate needle type type and size. As Tricia mentioned earlier, the MyPad also comes with a little flower head pen. It might be white or it might be yellow, but it's a flower head pen. So if you have some older Smets needles that don't have the color coding, once you take that needle out of your package and you put it in your machine, you can use this flower head pen to identify the needle currently in your machine. So I'm just going to slide it in right here into Jersey size 94. 14 and it just slides right in so just like um your needles your slightly used needles will just slide right in to this this little felt pad now if i was at in my home studio i would show you my my pad which has lots of slightly used needles but it's quite handy i keep one um right next to my sewing machine standing against my light source so my slightly used needles are um always handy so keep that in mind and you can find that at sewing parts online now the other thing i want to say about slightly used needles well you know maybe it's been a while since you used that slightly used needle and you're wondering, hmm, is that needle still sewing worthy? Here's a little tip for you. Take your slightly used needle and run it across your fingernail. And if it leaves a scratch on your nail, you know you've got a burr. And what are you going to do? Toss that needle. Or if you have a pair of old hose, and I know I say this every time, but I am never wearing hose again. You take some of your old hose or maybe you have some old um, knit fabric and run the needle across your fabric or hose. And if it snags, you know you've got a burr and you need to toss that needle. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, how long does the needle last? I don't know. It could be three seconds if you hit a pin right away. What you may not uh, realize is that if you hit a pin, I know everyone's concerned about bending the needle and that's certainly um, possible. Possible. But if you hit a pin, what you've done is also just compromise the point and the tip. So now your stitches are going to be compromised. So three seconds, maybe you can get 20 hours of sewing time out of your needle if you're not a very aggressive sewer or you're working on some finer fabric. So three seconds, 20 hours, um, that's quite the time span. <laughs> <laughs> I know that people like to average that out to six to eight hours of sewing time. But what I would like you to do is to become aware of the clues to changing the needle. What are the clues while you're sewing to changing the needles? And we kind of touched upon one clue already, and that's when your threads are breaking or shredding. You need to change out your needle. What you may not know is if you're not changing your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually create a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> A groove in the eye of the needle, what's it going to do? Break and shred your thread. So what are you going to do? Change out the needle. That's right. Uh, what about your fabrics when you're sewing? Um, are your fabrics puckering? Are they, uh, is the needle leaving a giant hole in your fabric? Is it punching your fabric? In a really bad case, when the needle hits your fabric, if the needle is actually tucking the fabric into your throat plate. And that's not a good thing. So what are you going to do? Change out the needle. What about your stitch quality? Are your stitches skipping? Are your seams uneven? Or maybe you're sitting at your machine and you're going, well, you know, I'm sewing in a straight line. How come my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Well, guess what? Your needle is dull. 
<laughs> and you just need to change out the needle. So, and there's one other clue to changing the needle when you're sewing. And I hope that when you're sewing, that you find that as a retreat and that you're in that bubble, right? And your machine is humming, humming, humming along. And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. What is that? It's your needle. And it's saying, hey, I've been working hard here. Change me. If you ignore the clicking sound, it graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. Now your needle is yelling at you. Change me. Change me. If you ignore the clicking and the popping, what's happening now? Your needle is going clunk, clunk, clunk. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my machine. That clunk, clunk, clunking is the needle begging, shouting, screaming at you. Change me. Change me. You know, those needles work really super hard. It used to be that needles, that machines would work 600 stitches per minute. And how fast are they sewing now? A thousand, 1200, 1600 stitches is a minute. So you know what? That sewing machine needle is working super hard for you and you should not expect it to last forever. So what's the solution? Just change out the needle. So those are your clues to changing out the needle. There is a new Smets app. This new Smets app, you're going to go to, and it's free, you're going to go to smetsneedles.com to resources. When you click resources in that upper right hand corner, the free app will pop up and you can download it to Android or um, Apple products. One of the features that I like about the um, app is it has a list of over 80 different fabrics. So you can click a fabric or you'll see a list of fabrics and it'll suggest what needle type and size to use. So keep that in mind. My name is Rhonda Pierce. I do represent Smets Home Sewing Machine Needles in North America and I do have a blog a personal blog, sewmorestitches.com. I'm not selling anything, but I do document my sewing projects. So you could go into 2020 sewing, 2021 sewing. I haven't done so much sewing this year yet, but it's it's happening. And But I'm starting to travel. So I've been posting pictures of my travel at sewmorestitches.com. The free Smets app includes the Smets ABC pocket guide. All of this information that's in the little pocket guide is in your app that you can download on your computer or also on your, your phone or multiple places. So in here, you'll find an alphabetical listing of all the different types of um, needles. There's a wonderful, wonderful pictures of the different points of the needle. So now you don't have to remember. It's here in the little ABC pocket guide, but it's also in the free app. We have the parts of the needle, so that's easy for you to um, remember. And most important, Importantly, we have um, the eyes of the needle. So now you don't have to remember that the embroidery, top stitch, and metallic have larger eyes. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention clues to changing um, the needle are in here too. So the color chart, the Smets color chart is in here. A review of what all those numbers mean on your little Smets needle pack. How many of you remember what 130705H means? That's a flat shank needle with a scarf that you can use in 99% of all of our home sewing machines. And then uh, we photographed all the different um, Smets needle types. We tell you what the spe special features are, sizes, um, etc. At the back of this little booklet, then you will find the alphabetical listing of fabrics and uh, needles type and size suggestions. So all of this is in the free app. What's also in the free app is a connection to thread companies. If you're working with a specific type of thread and you're wondering, hmm, I wonder what needle I should use. Uh, we have a few of the major thread companies uh, linked up. So if you're working with Salky, Mettler, Orifil, Wonderfil, etc. It'll take you right to that specific page talking about the needle type and size that they recommend for that specific type of thread. So lots of um, information in the free app. Ronnie is asking, is Microtex good for bag making? It can be. It's an option. You know, here's the thing about needles. Um, there's no needle police. 
<laughs> so sometimes, and you know, it's not like we have just a few fabric manufacturers the, the, these days. We have a plethora of different manufacturers. So um, Microtech certainly is an option when you're making um, bags. Probably if you're making a bag, you want a larger size, so 80 or, or 90. If you're making bags, um, the super nonstick is a great choice also, especially if you're working with um, some of the um, stabilizers to, or um, foams to give body to your, to your project. That would be a possibility. Another possibility would be um, the jeans needle with that reinforced blade. So you've got choices and Microtex certainly is a choice. I was taking note on that because I do love bag making as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. We appreciate you joining us as always. And we enjoyed meeting you in person finally. And hopefully we get to do that again. Yes, I hope so. Until next time, I want to say thank you to everyone for using Smets needles. Gosh, I hope our paths cross again. So Smets, everybody. Happy birthday, Rhonda.